Hi there, Capricorn. Welcome to your May 2018 tarot reading. So I feel like the theme of this month is that um, it's a period of major uh, readjustment and major reassessment when it comes overall to your long-term career, to your long-term housing situation, where you're living. Are you content to be there? Do you want to stay there long-term? Do you want to buy property? Do you want to move out? as well as relationship sectors as well. Um, what I feel happening here is, um, you know, we are dealing with uh, Saturn transiting your sign, right? So as early as January, things have been a little bit uh, um, hectic in your life. So that means, you know, people are like in your space, uh, things, you've been dealing with a lot of disruption. You've been dealing with disruptions in the work front uh, where you have to readjust your style to mesh with the demands of the work environment. There might have been uh, hard learned lessons as well about, you know, juggling two things such as school and work, such as doing two jobs, such as two relationships and you know personal life private life etc and i feel like you know it was a major wake-up call for many of you are you able to do this successfully uh or are there you know strategies that you need to embody or strategies that you need to kind of like uh, develop so that you can successfully juggle these things or you know maintain these disparate areas in your life and making sure that they're flowing and jiving smoothly so coming into the year 2018 and especially in january it was just you know scrambling it was like okay this is not working so i'm not going to do it anymore whereas this is working so i'm going to continue that it's like trial and error and then moving into the month of may when we are in a fellow earth sign when the sun is in uh, taurus and Taurus deals with stability and longevity and some things that are, you know, a little bit more stable and grounded. And this boost of grounding energy is allowing all the areas in your life to kind of fall in place, okay? So, needless to say, the energy for this month is not going to feel so chaotic and frustrating and busy and uh, unmanageable. The energy of this month is in fact very, 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 very smooth. And it is smooth so that you can kind of like take a breather. You don't have to struggle so hard anymore. Responsibilities are not slamming you left and right. People, uh, clients, customers, people that work for you are not calling you, you know, here's a complaint, there's a complaint, help me fix this, help me fix that. I see somebody running around uh, dealing with networks and system, um, the, the, the handyman, the fixer upper. So if you're in those occupations, I feel like, you know, the, the beginning of the year, um, and especially March, um, things were just haywire. And, you know, that, that has a lot to do with the Mercury retrograde cycle. But I feel like things are okay right now. You know, the, the work is not too crazy. And then also, financially, you have gone through that period of juggling, readjustment, and figuring out what works and what doesn't so that you can kind of scrap them uh, and, 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 you know, uh, focus on what is actually working in your life. So you've had to do this in order to get where you are right now, which is a place of financial security, financial stability, and a place where you feel really, really comfortable, okay? So this month, it's very much relationship oriented because news on the financial front looks very good. News on the relationship front, there is further readjustment that needs to happen for you guys. Um, I'm going to finish up t uh, talking about the, um, the other stuff first before I go into the relationship front. So let's talk about this. This is kind of like freedom and movement, okay? So th this combination, 
this is like the the pillars of stability okay home life happy home happy healthy family healthy relationship marital bliss having um you know parents and things like that to babysit the kids if needs be having generational wealth as well i see with this card and uh, especially having somebody that you are very compatible with okay so like the traditional structure home where we usually think of it mom dad kids and you know a pet or so and everyone is content and well fed and happy when it's in the reverse position it's almost like what else is out there there's more to life should I settle for this or should I pursue this so this is kind of like opportunities galore. When it's in the reverse position, it can feel like, oh my gosh, all these opportunities are coming in. And it's kind of debunking, you know, my sense of stability right now. So you have a lot of questions that are coming through for this month. First of all, am I married to the right person? You know? Uh, should we move house? Should we go to another country, uh, buy property elsewhere, buy property here? Should we travel? What's going to happen when we travel? Should we put the property up for sale or should we just travel and then rent it out? So I feel like you, there are a lot of things here that are being brought up for re-examination for this month. And then on top of that, we do have the moon as well. And this is usually two separate dwellings, okay? So I, I think of each tower as like a, a, a different home. So many of you might be shifting between different houses. Many of you might be shuttling back and forth. And if you have children as well, you know, custody issues, child support, visitation, all of these things are being brought into the picture where the home environment just feels a little bit crazy and it's a little bit hectic. If you are dating somebody and you're getting very serious, I also see this process as well. Running from one household to the next, Okay, like uh, you're in your house and then you want to stay over at their house and then you forget your toothbrush, you forget your clothes, you know, things like that. The, the, the bustle of shifting between two houses. And so you're just like, okay, do we take things to the next level? Do I, you know, tell them, hey, let's move in together. On the one hand, you love your independence. And then on the other hand, it's, it's almost like a practical choice too. You know, we can save so much money. We can um, save time and money. And we can, you know, I'll help you move and everything will be great. But on the other hand, there's trepidation from your end as well. Like, is this the right move? Is it too soon? Can we do it right now? And so I, I still feel like there's a, just a lot of fear coming into the picture. Financially, you're doing really well, and I feel like, you know, that should give you a lot of comfort. But um, relationship-wise, you know, there are a lot of uh, what-ifs here. I also feel, in general, many of you... So now let's talk about the relationship. Many of you are with somebody that you're not 100% compatible with. Great chemistry. Great, great, great chemistry. This is a card here where, you know, there's like, the chemistry is very intense. It's very magnetic. And it can also feel like, you know, that love at first sight. In the reverse position, all of those things still hold. But in the reverse position, it seems like you're dealing with someone who is quite opinionated, okay? And it's underneath the moon. The moon is all about intuition. It's all about, like, the unspoken words. It's in the reverse, with the lovers in the reverse. You have a partner that is very vocal. They're very vocal. I want this, I don't want that. And you have a partner that is incompatible with you. You like that, but I don't like that. You like this, but I, or you don't like this, but I like this. And they're very, very, very vocal about what they like, what they want, what their expectations are. And so, you know, Capricorns, um, I feel like you guys are really, really accommodating. And you're, you're never, like, too extreme. You really uh, appreciate people's uh, opinions and, you know, you 
you're really good at handling different types of people from all different types of、uh, all different walks of life. And so, if you're with a partner who's a little bit too extreme about what they like and what they don't like, and too extreme about pushing their agenda to be a specific way, I feel like that can be a little bit scary. If you're thinking, you know. What are the next steps? Or if you're thinking, if we're gonna, you know, build a life together, how are we going to? How are we going to、um, do it without conflict? And then, if you're with somebody who might not have the same plans, you know, do we want to get married? Do we want children? It's like these basic, fundamental things about marriage, about compatibility, about love and intimacy, and you know, sexual attraction and all of that. And then it also boils down to career. Are we headed in the right、uh, direction? You want to live here. I want to live here. Like West Coast, East Coast things as well. And if you want to live here and I want to live here, close to my family. Where, like, what's going to happen to the relationship? You know, eventually. So there are a lot of things here that you have to kind of、uh, re-examine. And I feel like for many of you, it's not even that extreme. It could just be, I want to get married right now, whereas the other person is all like, my career is not established yet. I need to wait to get published. I need to wait to finish school. You know, people in grad school doing their dissertation, getting grants, getting published, they feel a little bit incomplete, and they're like, "Can't we? Can we wait to have children, or can we wait to get married until I'm ready?" And then for others, it's like you're with somebody and you're contemplating that next step. You know, move in together, and you might realize that oh, we might not have very much in common. Or you want the closeness. You want that. You want to be able to take care of your partner. And you've worked really hard to, you know, make yourself like this, so that you can have wealth and abundance and free time and, you know, the the luxuries that your income can afford you, so that you can give your partner the nice life. But your partner. It's just like iffy. Like I'm not really sure that's what I want. I'm not really sure if I want to move in and get married. I'm not really sure if marriage is for me, and I'm not really sure if I want children. So I feel like major steps are are will need to be discussed. And whatever you might have swept under the rug, I feel like they're coming back to kind of、um, pick at you this month. So it's really important to have these big discussions. Okay. I feel this overall. This is a, a love relationship. It can also be some type of a clandestine relationship. Okay, somebody that is geographically out of the picture. They travel. They come in, and you know, there's just like great intense chemistry. But it's it's only apparent when because they're there for a very short period of time, and then when they're they're there for too long, you start to feel like oh my gosh we have nothing in common, and then very quickly they leave the picture. They they fly back to where they're coming from, and so I feel like many of you are just like I'm not. I feel empty. I'm not feeling this relationship anymore. I don't want to maintain it anymore. And then for others of you, it's sort of like this. You're debating between your family. And you're debating between this clandestine love affair. On the one hand, the family situation feels very restrictive. Like you, you want a way out. You want, you know, to leave. But the financial situation is also keeping you very grounded. And for financial reasons, you might not want to leave because of alimony, because of、um, having to divide up assets. So you're not yet ready to leave. But then there's this allure, there's this pull from the other relationship, which is very under the radar. It is very exciting. There's chemistry, and so you're kind of torn between, you know, a rock and a hard place.、Um, I'm also feeling as well for many of you. It seems to me like there's a, a big job, a job offer or something coming in, and. 
I feel like it requires a big move and you're not yet ready. You're comfortable where you are. Life is calling, but you're comfortable where you are. And so you might be turning it down. So this is news received and it's like it's not being responded to, okay? So you, you're just like, I'm happy here, but there's opportunity for growth. So this here is very, very stable and it's, it's, it's comfortable for you. And as a Capricorn, as an earth sign, I feel like there's a sense of loyalty to the company that you're, you're working in or wherever you, you're at, possibly even a relationship where it's comfortable. It's, it's, it's bringing out your sense of loyalty and it can also feel very complacent. But I feel like there's also this other aspect of you, you know, um, that wants to break out, that wants to try new things, that wants to really entertain this other offer that's on the table. So uh, love temptation is also clumped in with this, as well as new work that's coming into the picture for you that you really want to entertain, that you really want to uh, run with, okay? And so, I guess, going back to the um, the main message here, seems like you've got a lot on your plate. Um, I feel like many of you are in a relationship, and I feel like your, your life is calling. It's like opportunities to travel, opportunities to work overseas. Life is calling. There seems to me to be like a separation from a love relationship because of work. There's a separation from a love relationship because of travel, because of movement, because of uh, travel from the partner, the relationship partner as well. And then I'm also seeing, you know, opportunities coming in that you're not hesitant, that you're not ready to take, mainly because you're comfortable with where things are right now, even though things are not 100% that solid or that great but you have this immense sense of loyalty to this to stay either it's a relationship or a love uh, uh, i'm sorry a work situation or a love relationship or a marriage situation there, there's an immense sense of loyalty so i'm gonna stay here yes i'm conflicted and emotionally you know i'm, I'm not feeling at my best but i'm gonna stay because it's safe and i need to be loyal so You've got some difficult decisions coming through. I'm not going to lie here, Capricorn. And, you know, do the right thing. Do the right thing. We have this combination coming out, okay? Um, the Page of Wands and the Hermit. This is telling you, really, really, really look at the messages that are coming in for you. All is not what it seems. Okay, so for example, if you are right now, um, if you're, you have two jobs and one job is paying really well and then the other job is kind of like, um, they're, they're telling you, we have more freelance work. Do you want to um, leave your company and, and work with us? Really re-examine what's on the table, what's on the offering from this company and really look at, really look at the communication that's coming in. For example, if they send you, you know, like a, a little, uh, a letter to poach you from your current company, look at it carefully. What kind of language do they use? Are they clear with their intentions? Are they being duplicitous? And if they're being duplicitous, do you want to work with that organization? So be very, very careful. Read the, 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 the letters. Read everything and be clear that you're getting a straightforward answer from them, okay? Because that pretty much sets the tone for the company that you're gonna be dealing with. So that should kind of um, allow you to see into the inner workings of the company or the people that you're that are trying to hire you so that you can avoid a potential pitfall. Um, Page of Wands as well deals with communication uh, overall. And it might not be of the, the, the smoothest nature. So it could be inflammatory news, okay? And for some of you, inflammatory news coming in from this hermit card from a Virgo. And then for others, just inflammatory news. And uh, this is what I call like the boy who cried wolf, okay? So if we have a fire sign in your miss, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, 
or even just uh, somebody who's like time and time again, uh, they, they, they get overwhelmed and then they're just like, help me do this. I'm in a jam. Can you help me? And um, it, they're not really taking ownership to help themselves. They're waiting for your help and they don't understand that it's actually a big burden on you. You have things going on in your life, right? You've got a lot of things. You've got a lot of things that you need to take care of, even though work might not be as crazy. But you have a lot of other things that are going on in your life, and they're just like, they're not very thoughtful and considerate. So this is sort of like looking a little bit more into the situation. Uh, don't enable the situation. If they're coming to you crying wolf or they're coming to you all the time, it might not be appropriate for you to help them all of the time. And you need to kind of like, you know, steal up a little bit and allow them to creatively solve their own problems, okay? It's not in the spirit of selfishness, but it is more about uh, not enabling certain behaviors in other people. And I, I know that, you know, you're watching this and you guys are so nice that, and it's, it has nothing to do with niceness. It's just, you believe that, you know, if it's going to be, if there's a problem and someone is going to fix it, you'd rather have you be the person to fix it so that it's done right. And then on top of that, even if it's not somebody you care about, you still want to help. So I feel like this need to, you know, want to make sure things are done right as well. Um, that's coming in, but just be, be careful about, you know, not creating an enabling type of a pattern for this person. Um, let me just pull out a few more cards for this relationship cluster here. Who are we dealing with? Okay. Okay, so I have here, this is basically an offer, okay? This is somebody like uh, who, who's, who's really fascinated by uh, shiny objects who might be a little bit more materialistic. I have here the star. This is the card of Aquarius. So Aquarius, sun, moon, or rising, okay? And when it shows up in this combination, it's almost like... Um, you're really, really attracted to somebody who's very, very uh, beautiful, very inspiring, very um, just um, incredibly intelligent too. And I feel for many of you, it's in a school setting, academic setting, mainly because this is a card of a student and this is a card of trying to master something. Some of you are in the healthcare profession as well because this deals with uh, healing modalities. This is a student studying in order to master something. And there might be attraction in those uh, avenues in your life. There might be, you know, just a lot of intense attraction to another person. And you're kind of um, debating between the validity of your relationship and, you know, the new people coming in. So I do have another earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. And then I also have Aquarius as well. Um, I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of signs, so water, even water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. But the point of this is I feel like there are a lot of major relationships that you have to re-examine. And a lot of it just stems from the fact that, you know, are we on the same boat? We love each other, but do we both want kids? Do we both want to settle down? Do we both want to be in the same city? Do we want to buy a property? You might be with someone who's so independent very, very independent. They have so much potential, right? Like they have so much potential. They might eventually want to work overseas or they're, you know, trying to establish their own business. And it's just, it's, it's so like career focused um, that the emotional aspects are not really discussed or, you know, are kind of overlooked, okay? So take the time to really, you know, dive deep and, and, and resolve some of these relationship tensions, okay? Because I feel like it might... It's like the only thing I feel that's interfering in your life right now, and if you can get that resolved, it would just be so much better for you. 
Let me see if there's anything else. Okay, heavy, heavy fire sign energy. We have here the page of wands. So once again, this is um, news, inflammatory news coming through from family members. Okay, so for those of you who are, you know, residing in like with, with family members or have like big families with a lot of siblings, a lot of cousins, where you have a lot of get togethers, or you have, you know, like the, the very traditional family unit where there are a lot of family gatherings or family expectations, you know, kind of like we have to take care of our el elderly parents and or we have to um you know try to meet up with each other every month so i feel as if there are a lot of expectations that might not even be appropriate anymore okay so this is all screaming out family to me family unit social expectations that that cohesion and it's sort of like somebody who's a leader doing the wrong things and no one is really calling him out on it or her out on it mainly because they have this sense of hierarchy and this sense of respect and this sense of uh, deference reference reverence i'm sorry deference and reverence towards the authority figure even if the authority figure um is not operating from a space of authority so i feel like there are things here that we need to kind of re-examine when we go through this month okay are we um respecting the right things are we valuing the right things as well um i feel for some of you there is a major dilemma here about how you are m w making your money are you doing it in an ethical way or are you you know kind of like um stomping on the backs of others in order to get ahead because um karma doesn't really discriminate and you know whatever was taken from one place you can't really retain it for very long if it doesn't belong to you you're not going to be able to keep it so that is wealth people resources whatever the, the situation is if it's not rightfully yours it's going to sooner or later be returned to its rightful source, okay? So that's just something we want to keep in mind. Uh, financially, things are going really well, uh, Capricorn, but I feel like, you know, you have some bigger philosophical issues that are coming through, and you need to kind of sort these things out. May is a good month for you to have your bearing and for you to figure out what you want to do, mainly because when we shift into June, it's a time of Gemini. And Gemini is like, uh, the energy is going to be very, very kinetic, okay? So you're not going to have a relaxing month like this. So it's a good time to kind of sort all of these things out internally, okay? Where do we want to live and things like that, okay? Um, be very careful with your relationship partners. Make sure that things don't escalate um, tension and things like that, okay? Just be careful. So, I wish you all the best, and I'll be back. Um, I'll try to be back for the mid-month reading if I have time, but there's no guarantees. I hope the reading is helpful, though. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.